fun doll fans it is your boy dylan and i am here for my very unfortunate post game analysis video for you guys as you know the dolphins lost yesterday and they found a way to do it in spectacular fashion as they usually do in moments like this so unfortunately it's a little bit more of the same old dolphins kind of stuff and look i predicted a loss going in this th into this game but I figured it would be closer than what the ultimate score ended up being. I figured we'd end up being, I predicted, a 20-13 to 13 loss. Um, so, you know, for me, I wasn't, you know, probably as disappointed as most Dolphins fans who went into it expecting to fucking kick the shit out of the Titans. Because um, my expectations weren't that high, obviously. You know, and I felt that, Yes, the seven-game win streak was a lot of fun and whatever, but, you know, as we've mentioned, the context for most of that was, you know, obviously the biggest reason was the defense finally started being called appropriately by this coaching staff, and then obviously, too, the fact that the schedule was overall, you know, pretty weak. Um, and we took advantage of that, and it was a lot of fun, but eventually it did have to come to an end. I mean, you can't win indefinitely, so obviously eventually it had to come to an end. Most Dolphins fans, myself included, hoped that it was going to carry us to the Super Bowl, but I am a lot more realistic than most Dolphins fans, and I did not think that was going to be the case, nor did I think we were going to make the playoffs, unfortunately, as terrible as it is. Now, since we've been officially eliminated, just real quick, I want to mention that you know, I am going to do a playoffs video on Wednesday, but it's not going to be for us anymore. It's just going to be like playoff tracking and I'll, I'll still do an updated um, draft order, uh, draft positioning, at least until it gets, well, I guess throughout the rest of the, the, the season because, um, you know, it's going to, everything's going to get finalized over the, the course of the rest of the year and throughout the playoffs. But I was going to say for sure I'll keep doing it as long as, you know, until our pick and the Eagles pick gets finalized um, and we know wh exactly where we're going to be picking for sure in the upcoming draft. But throughout the rest of the playoffs and or throughout the rest of the regular season and through the playoffs, I'm still going to do a playoff video, but I'm just going to be doing playoff tracking, see how it's going and, you know, do like my predictions for the games and stuff, who I think is going to win. Maybe I'll do score predictions. I'll at least do win-loss predictions, but we'll get to that when we get there. I'll still, you know, probably do that on Wednesday. But for now, let's go ahead and get to this post-game analysis. So first and foremost, as I mentioned, Dolphins do get eliminated because not only did we lose this game and drop to 8-8, eight and eight, but with the way that the other games played out, they actually did not play out very much in our favor at all. And, you know, by the end of the day, the Dolphins got officially eliminated from playoff contention after the Chargers ended up winning. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, next year, obviously, we'll get to the offseason when we get there. There's going to be the whole Deshaun Watson stuff. We'll talk about that more later. Um, I just kind of do want to focus on the here and now. So, you know, as far as this game goes, again, I did expect a loss, but I expected it to be a lot closer. You know, we're going to get into some specifics, but really, with a couple minor exceptions, almost nobody played well in this game. Um, but the coaching staff fucked it off, too, right from Jump Street, because their game plan was completely shit. So... Well, again, we'll talk about all of that. You know, we were terrible in special teams as well. So we'll talk about all of that. It was definitely a collective effort. I know a lot of people, the, the media, a lot of the media, a lot of fans are wanting to hyper focus on Tua. And don't get me wrong, he had a bad day. Again, we're going to get into that. But it certainly wasn't all his fault. And it really shouldn't have has. It really shouldn't have been on his shoulders as much as it was. Again, we'll get into that. Let's actually start breaking this down now because, as you can see, we got absolutely obliterated by the Titans yesterday. Um, you know, and, and real quick, I'll be honest with you guys because you guys know that I'm a Tannehill fan. Now, when we play the Titans and against Tannehill, I'm not a Tannehill fan on that day as I was not yesterday. And that's why I decided not to wear his jersey yesterday and wear a different one, even though it's obviously a Dolphins jersey. I wore my Parker jersey yesterday for the game. 
Um, now that this game is over and it's in the books, I will be rooting for Ryan Tannehill and the Tennessee Titans going forward. And as long as they beat the Texans, which again, we'll talk about this more on Wednesday, as long as they beat the Texans this upcoming week, they'll be the number one seed and they'll get the first round off. But again, more on that later. For now, let's focus on this. They are 11 and five. And look, you know, throughout the season, they've been one of the more injured teams in the league. Obviously, Derrick Henry's been out now for seven straight weeks because of his foot injury, but that's not all. They've had over 30, 35 players on the injured reserve list throughout the entire season, so they've had a lot of issues. This game, though, they just got their entire off, and they, they are actually getting healthier at this point, which is perfect for them because they are going to look to be at full strength going into the playoffs, right? Um, and, and, and if they do get the first overall seed in that first round by, that only helps them, obviously. So, um, but they got their entire offensive line back for this game, which was huge. So, you know, they're in good, good position and they found a way to just continue winning. We're eight and eight now. They are 11 and five. They kicked the shit out of us. 34 to three absolutely obliterated us. Now they didn't have to do a lot, right? Well, especially Ryan Tannehill, because they had a good game plan going into this, especially considering the fact that the weather was absolute shit. Again, we'll get into more of that in just a second. Um, but I do want to also mention, of course, it was a home game for them, so they did have that. But most things in this scenario actually did favor the Titans. It was a home game. The weather favored them. Um, the fact that they had their entire offensive line back and were able to neutralize a lot of our pass rush and stuff like that, et cetera, et cetera, right? So... I mean, just lots of things went in their favor, and ultimately, I like I said, I figured they were going to come away with the win, just didn't expect it to this be this bad. Anyway, they did win in the overall total yardage category, their 308 to our 256. We did beat them in passing, though, our 182 to their 110, but again, obviously, for a lot of that, we were playing from behind. Ryan Tannehill wasn't asked to do a lot, didn't need to, and nor should he have because of, of the conditions, especially, right? So... And then when you look at this, this goes to show you a little bit of their game plan. They had 198 rushing yards. We had 74. So not good enough, especially for the conditions. We'll delve a little deeper that into that in just a second. 5.2, because I get it. The Dolphins are not a very good run team. And they had, I think, the second best or fourth best, something like that, rushing defense in the league. I think it's second best, actually, going into this game. I get that, but when you take the conditions, the weather conditions into account, and then the game flow, which we will get into in a second, um, there was no reason not to run the ball, and especially because the struggles that the offense in the passing game were having, right? It just was, it wasn't just Tua, right? He dropped the ball a couple times, had some fumbles. Um, there was a, there was a, one of them just, it slipped right out of his hand. One of them was a bad exchange between him and the center. One of them was a bad exchange between him and the running back, right? So, but a lot of that had to go, a lot of that had to do with the weather and stuff. And then, but there was also, but there was also drop passes and so on and so forth, you know, could be potentially weather related. Point is though, with those kinds of struggles, they should have just leaned on the run game in addition to some of the other stuff, which we'll mention in a second. They were 5.2 yards per play, our 4.3. They obviously won the turnover battle because they got one fumble and an interception. We didn't cause any turnovers at all. They were 46% on third down, um, not good enough for us. 25% for us, obviously not good. They win the time of possession battle, 33-12 to our 26-48. We did win in the penalties battle, technically, although there was terrible officiating in this game. I will admit to that. But of course, as I will always say with that, it's rampant across the league. Dolphins fans can't be hanging their hat on the on the refs, um, you know, to win us games, man. So we lost 34 to fucking three for a reason because the team didn't show up at all. Anyway, Tua, again, he had a very bad day. It wasn't all his fault. And again, the game plan should not have asked him to throw 38 times. They should have ran, ran, ran the ball. But anyway, he was 18 for 38, 47.4% completion percentage, 205 yards, the one interception and a 53.1 passer rating. Definitely his worst game. But again, it was a tough opponent. They do have a really good defense. And that offense obviously is able to put up some points. So 
Um, and then the weather conditions, right? So anyway, and by the way, these are not excuses for those people who want to make it seem like they're excuses. No, it's just excuses are things that are like reaches or made up or things that don't apply or are irrelevant that you use as a reason for why failure happened or whatever. No, these are just pieces of context that explain the results. Right? If you take these variables out of the equation, then the results probably would be different. Is that to say that we would win necessarily? No, but I'm saying the equation, if the equation is different, the result is different. So it's very important to have these elements be talked about because they are important pieces of context. Now again, Ryan Tannehill on the other side, he only completed 13 passes, but he was only asked to throw 18 times. And so he was 72.2% completion percentage for 120 yards, two touchdowns, and a 127.1 passer rating. So that also illustrates a little bit of the differences there in the game plan. Now let's look at, because this, this alludes to, and if you watch the game, you can see the game flow. Duke Johnson had seven uh, attempts for 49 yards and a seven average. Why not fucking lean on it? Anyway, I digress. I've said it enough. You guys probably watch the game and you guys understand. Miles Gaskin, 5 for 23 and a 4-6. Decent. Lean on the fucking run game, man. And, but, and then when you look at them, that's what they did. The Titans did that. Deontay Foreman, 26 for 132 with a touchdown and a 5.1 average. Dontrell Hilliard, 8 for 45, a touchdown and a 5.6 average. Jeremy McNichols threw it 2 for 14 and a 7 average. I don't know why, I mean, I have my speculations. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't want to think that Brian Flores is, you know, intentionally doing things to sabotage Tua, but... People need to start waking up to that as being a very, very real possibility as why thing as to why things have happened over the course of the season, including the fact that he allowed the first eight weeks of the season to be played defensively in a very scared posture and didn't employ the defensive because then we wouldn't be in this position and we'd actually probably have a good chance of not only being in the playoffs, but even potentially being uh, the division leader potentially even having the number one seed if we would have won, you know, the Vegas, the Indy game, the Jacksonville game, the Falcons game, etc. And some of those games could have absolutely been won by defense if we were playing a different scheme then. Anyway, receiving, Gesicki led the way, 4 of 7 for 51, Waddle 3 of 7 for 47. So now he's still three receptions away from breaking the rookie record. Parker was 4 of 13 for 46. Smythe, 3 of 3 for 37. Duke Johnson, 2 of 3 for 16. A.J. Brown led the way for them, 2 of 5 for 41. Hilliard, 3 of 3 for 33. Anthony Ferkser, 3 of 3 for 24 and a score. Chester Rogers, 2 of 2 for 13. Joff Swaim, 3 of 3 for 9 and a touchdown. Defensively, Javon Holland led the way for us. 7 solo tackles, a tackle for loss, and a pass defense. He was definitely one of our bright spots. Maybe you could say Christian Wilkins, Baker at, had moments. Um, you know, uh, there wasn't much. There wasn't really much good to look at here. Anyway, Wilkins had 6 solo, 5 assisted, and a tackle for loss. Baker had 6 solo, 1 assisted, 1 sack, 1 tackle for loss. Roberts, 5 solo, 3 assisted, and a TFL. Zach Sealer, 4 solo, 4 assisted. Brandon Jones, four solo, one assisted. Agba, three solo. Howard, two solo with a pass defense. Raekwon Davis, one solo, one assisted, a TFL. Jalen Phillips, one solo, one assisted, and a TFL. And overall, we had 43 total tackles, 19 assisted, one sack. We uh, yeah, had one sack. Uh, for some reason, I thought we had a second. No, we had just the one. One sack, uh, six TFL, six tackles for loss, and two passes defensed. Zach Cunningham led the way for them. Four solo tackles, two assisted. Janoris Jenkins, Janoris Jackrabbit Jenkins, four solo tackles with a pass defensed. Amani Hooker, three solo, three assisted, and a PD. Kevin Byard, three solo, one assisted. Danico Autry, three solo, one sack, one tackle for loss. Christian Fulton, three solo with two passes defense. David Long, two solo, two assisted with an interception and a pass defense. Harold Landry, one solo, two assisted, one sack, one tackle for loss. Kyle Pecco, one solo, one assisted, one sack, one forced fumble. And Elijah Molden, one assisted tackle with a fumble recovery and a pass defense. In total, they were 33 solo, 15 assisted, three sacks, 
two tackles for loss, one forced fumble, one recovery, one interception, and six passes defense. As previously mentioned, our kicking game and our special teams weren't very great. Jason Sanders missed another field goal. He was one of two along a 39. Obviously didn't have any extra point attempts. Bullock was two of two on his field goals along a 44. 4-4 four, four on his extra points. Michael Pilardi was pretty terrible. He had four punts, a 36.8 average, with one inside the 20, along a 42. Kern had four with a 44.3 average, three inside the 20, and a 52, along a 52. Lindsay had two returns for 17 average, along a 18. We let up a pretty long return in the kickoff game to Dontrell Hilliard, one for 24 yards. Waddle had one punt return for 15. Christian Milton had one for no gain. Chester Rogers had three for a 9.3 average and a long of 11. All right, now let's get into these league standings. Unfortunately, in most categories after this game, we do take you know um, some dips in the standings or you know don't really make much of an adjustment there are a couple categories where we see some green as you can start to see down here but let's get into it so we are currently 24th in total yards on the season 4921 we drop in per game average from a 311 to 307.6 dropping from 24th to 25th we're 16th in total passing, 3,827 on the year. Drop in per game average to, from 241.5 to 239.2, down from 16th to 17th. We're currently 30th in total rushing, 1,373. Drop down to 31st from 30th after we have a little bit of a decrease from 86.6 to 85.8. We drop in total points from 21st to 23rd after only scoring three in this game, and now we have 308 on the season. We drop in per game average from 20.3 to 19.3, down from 21st to 24th or 23rd after ties. We dropped in third down percentage from 41.3% to 40.4, down from 12th to 13th. Defensively, we remain 15th in yards per game, but we did have we did drop a little bit the percent uh, the the overall per game average from 336.7 to 334.9. We did have a little bit of a drop in the passing yards per game, 258 down to 249.4. That does bring us up from 22nd to 19th. We dropped, though, in our rushing performance on defense. We had an increase from 102.3 to 108.3, from 7th down to 11th. In points per game, we had a slight increase from 21 up to 21.8, dropping us from 10th down to 16th or 13th after ties. We didn't get any takeaways, so we still only have 20 or st we still have 23 on the season from 10th down to 11th, 9th after ties. 13 interceptions remain, and that's dropping us from 14th to 15th, 9th after ties. When it comes to fumble, we still have 10, 6 down to 7th fourth after ties sacks we did get the one but that drops us from first all the way down to third all the way it's two spots but we're technically tied for second passes defensed we got two 83 up to 85 but that does drop us to second place right behind now the the patriots um and then third downs we uh, had a slight increase, so up from 40.3 to 40.7, down from 18th to 19th. So obviously, like I said, most of it wasn't very good. The game wasn't very good. I mean, it is what it is. Did we win? No. Quick breakdown here. Dolphins received the ball to start. We punted after five plays. Titans go three and out. Dolphins go three and out. Titans go three and out. Dolphins go three and out. So it started off pretty evenly matched. Thought maybe, okay, we can, you know, keep ourselves in this. And the defense certainly did for a little while. And then obviously they just kind of broke down and, and opened up as the game went on. Titans then get their first touchdown after eight plays on their third drive, making it zero to seven in their favor. Dolphins then fumble. Titans get a field goal to end the first quarter, making it 0-10 to 10 in their favor. Then we go to the second. Dolphins kick a field goal, finally get some points. Obviously the only points. It took them to their fifth drive, and it took 10 plays to go get that field goal, making it 3-10. to 10. Titans then answer with a touchdown, 3-17. to 17. Dolphins punt. Titans end the half. Third quarter comes around, they receive the ball, they punt after nine plays, Dolphins miss a field goal, giving them good field position and, and whatnot, but then we did force a punt. 
Um, move into the fourth quarter. Dolphins turnover on downs. Titans touchdown, 3-24. to Dolphins turnover on downs again. Dolphins then get a field goal, 3-27. to Dolphins throw an interception. Titans answer with a touchdown, 3-34, to 34-3 in their favor. Dolphins in the game after three plays. It was disaster. It was horrible. It was hard to watch. It was stressful, all of that. But, you know, unfortunately now it's in the books and it is what it is. Um, you know, we're going to obviously, again, I'm still going to do a, you know, a playoff video each week for the remainder of the season, but it's going to be from a different perspective, obviously. So check out for that. You know, I, we still got one more game to play. So there'll be a preview video on Friday for the Patriots game. I still will do, you know, some point in the week before then. You know, I'll throw in my scouting report. I mean, they absolutely destroyed the Jaguars this week, 50 to 10. So I'll do my scouting report video for that. Um, but then other than that, you know, and then other than, you know, tracking and following the playoffs and stuff, it's going to be mostly just getting ready for the offseason, the draft, free agency, the Deshaun Watson bullshit. Um, so, you know, um, like, I wish... Honestly, you know, I get this rap for being a, you know, a negative pessimistic person, but like, I wish I could bring myself to lie to you guys and tell you that everything's going to be all good and, you know, we're going to turn it around and they're going to go and trade away, you know, a bunch of draft capital and cap space, but they're going to get Deshaun Watson and he alone is going to turn this organization around and blah, blah, blah. We're going to be championship contenders again soon. Like, I wish I could tell you all guys that. You uh, like I really do, I really do, but unfortunately, that's just not how I see it because that's not what the data would suggest and indicate. It's just not a logical outcome when you put it all together. That's not what the equation equals. So, you know, I just got to keep it real with you guys, you know, and and tell you like it is. And so, you know, we're gonna go through it and we're gonna, you know, deal with it together, right? As Dolphins fans and we'll figure it out. We'll voice our complaints and you know, for me though, I, I can't not be a Dolphins fan. So as painful as it may be, I will always stick around with this team. I'll keep following them and keep giving my views and opinions and perspectives. So, you know, it is what it is and we'll just keep trucking forward as usual. And, you know, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Before I do, make sure you check out the Rave On Sports app, the new fan-driven sports app for all of your sports, whether it be basketball, baseball, football, college, whatever you like, they got it. And they're looking to enhance your game day experience with live play-by-play -play coverage, live chats with other fans and content creators like myself, as well as providing you with a platform to dispute and bitch and complain about all the terrible officiating that we have seen for years and years now. And so make sure you look for the links to that in the description box. With that, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comments section. And of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro, as well as on Instagram at Dolphins underscore with underscore Dylan. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.